The advanced word is a new map in the general category that is intended to be used together with the physical material, this kind of setup. You use the advanced word and uses three outputs, the diffuse color connected to the base color map, the roughness to the roughness and the bump, unsurprisingly, to the bump. Rendering this will give a really nice out of the box appearance of wood without really doing much. Uh, you can see how reflections catch the light nicely, how there's really subtle bump effects and details going on in the wood. And the detail level is really one of the most interesting things. If we zoom in a bit, we'll start to see little things like tiny little pores. But that's not even the end of the level of detail, because zooming in more, we'll see that there's this fine-grained noise which gives an appearance of fibers on the side, which means the wood, while you can use it to do like a wood plank seen at a distance like this, it is really designed to hold up for even the smallest of details like our tiny little wood teapot here. It's of course also driven by presets. You have presets for a bunch of different wood material. Let's pick, say, a walnut, semi-glossy, and everything updates immediately and we have the appearance of walnut. Uh, we can flip through real quick the presets and check out something like stained dark semi-glossy pine, glossy oak, or maybe stained light semi-glossy cherry wood. Or why not a little bit of painted ash? You might wonder the painted stuff, is that just a color? Well, there is a color of course, but uh, the wood still can subtly be seen through the paint and little things like roughness and effects for bump are still apparent even in the painted cases. But of course we probably prefer to play around with stuff like the regular wood colored ones. Mahogany. Mm. I want some of that. To understand all the other parameters of the wood it's actually easier if I turn all the features off and we play with them one at a time individually. Wood in this state are pure cylinders. If we pull out our three-dimensional sample we see again it's basically circles going straight down the plank and nothing is varying in any way. doesn't look very much like wood at all actually when you do it like that. We're working with two basic colors, the early wood and the late wood. The early wood is of course a color you can set, uh, uh, just the basic color of the wood. The late wood by default is computed by this power function, which is like a gamma. If you turn it up, you see the dark color gets darker, and you can even turn it less than one and make it brighter, but that's not really a normal use case. A value around two is what's normally used. For these colors, we can apply a random variation with noise. Uh, we see now it changes a little uh, instead of being completely flat colors. There is an overall roughness setting for the material, which is basically the roughness that comes from the output here. And if I turn on the use groove roughness, that means I have a separate roughness value for the early wood area. This allows me to have these cool effects where the different kinds of wood catch the light differently, which happens in a lot of materials where the varnish seeps differently into the harder and less hard woods. For the late wood, you can use a custom color uh, and make something outlandishly horrible like this, but Honestly, for the most part, you use the computed one through the power. Same, it has a bit of a noise effect, which is kind of non-obvious here. And we can turn on so it shows up in the bump channel and actually drives a bit of bumpiness based on where the dark parts of the wood are. 
the diffuse Perlin noise globally adds this super detailed small noise I was showing earlier. So when I zoom in here we have all these really fine little things. If I turn it off it's kind of just flat fades between the two colors. Then down here we have the ratios of stuff. For instance how much late wood there is compared to how much early wood there is and the sharpness on the fade in and the fade out of the wood. So if I sharpen up the late wood uh, we see we have a very strong cutoff and we turn down the early wood sharpness we get more like a natural looking fade kind of like tree rings do look in reality. A lot of little nifty details can be gotten by tweaking this then comes the really interesting part about the geometry. We're still in pure cylinder mode. We just had some color variation, but nothing changes down the length of the plank. However, if I turn this on, it's kind of like the rings are kind of growing and shrinking down the length of the plank. And suddenly, we do have some variation going on. And if you check this one, we see that we add a set of randomness to this variation which can be tweaked a bit and now if we pull our slices out we see that what's bending here is slightly different there and slightly different here there and that is what's causing all the interesting effects on the side of the wood and finally here we have the growth purlin noise which is basically variations from year to year so now we see we had some years that was growing more and other years that was growing less adding a lot of richness to the appearance then we have the pores pores are tiny little dots in the wood I need to zoom in to see them and we should punch up the color power to make them more obvious there's one there's one, there's one. We can play with the radius of them. We can pl play with the cell dimension, which is effectively the distance between them. So lower numbers makes more of them. Of course, the most interesting is not really how they appear here on the end of the wood, but that they do generate these kind of streaks on the side. Plus, they can show up in the bump channel by turning on the pore depth and actually look a little bit like grooves and holes. Final effect is the rays, also driven by a color power, easier to see if we turn it up. That's basically cracks in the wood from the center out to the edges. We can set how many we have. There's a bunch of settings for how they appear and depth and size and tweakiness. So those are all the effects of the parameters of the advanced wood. The uh, presets populate all of them except the scale and axis. The scale is just a scale setting for how big the effect is and when set to 1 it should when scene units checkbox is checked it should match real world scaling for that type of wood. I'd set it for two just to show up a little clearer. The axis of course picks through which uh, axis of the object the wood goes through. This is the object's X direction. This is the object's Y direction in this case. And if we rip this apart a little in 3D and zoom in. We can check out all the delicious little detail of how the yearly rings touch the side, how the pores appear, the little glossiness changes, little streaks on the side. And I really hope you guys will enjoy using this map to make some juicy wood renders and some beautiful things coming out of Max 2019. Thanks for listening and I hope you enjoy the advanced wood. Bye bye.